Welcome back to our special PTL Christmas Day show. This year, Hollywood Movie Studios are giving us some great gifts for the holiday. It's a big lineup of movies, so diverse that there's something for everyone. Here with a guide to the holiday movies is KDKA's resident film critic, Dr. Drew Mignot. Welcome. Thanks. Merry oh, Christmas. You're already here. Merry Christmas to you, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, the big one here is Star Wars. Yes, yes. This rolled into theaters on December 15th, uh, kind of like a land walker, crushing everything <laughs> in its path. Um, you know, this is becoming a Hollywood uh, holiday tradition. You know, the last two years, we've had Star Wars movies that have been released. Uh, this is the eighth movie in a nine-movie, um, you, know, uh, you know, story that uh, George Lucas envisioned from the very beginning he wanted a trilogy of trilogies you know and so again this is eight out of nine uh, the last Jedi marks the last appearance of Carrie Fisher mm -hmm. who of course passed away last December 27th uh, just a day before her famous movie mom Debbie Reynolds passed away right. um, and but again will this be her last appearance you never know they can digitally recreate characters so you never really know uh, this marks the return of Mark Hamill um, and people are very excited you know this is the 40th anniversary of the Star Wars uh, franchise and in that amount of time it has earned 37 billion dollars <laughs> worldwide. That's not counting the revenue from uh, The Last Jedi and um, a lot of money involved here. You know uh, George Lucas uh, sold uh, the rights to uh, this franchise back in 2012 to Disney for four billion dollars. So a wow. lot of money behind these movies. Wow, unbelievable. How about The doc Darkest Hour? What is this about? Uh, this is about the dark days that preceded World War II. Winston Churchill uh, was the uh, newly appointed Prime Minister of England and he faced a really, really tough decision. He had to figure out whether or not he would negotiate with Adolf Hitler or uh, launch a war. Um, and uh, Gary Oldman uh, plays um, uh, Winston Churchill in this movie. You know, he was here in, in Pittsburgh back in 2012 filming The Dark Knight Rises as Commissioner Gordon. He's had a really interesting career playing characters like Sid Vicious early in his uh, career. He played a very convincing Lee Harvey Oswald in the movie JFK for Oliver Stone. He's played Dracula for Francis Ford Coppola. He's been Beethoven, a whole list of really scary characters. Um, lots of range and lots of intensity. You know, we're back to another World War II story. Earlier this year, we had Dunkirk from Christopher Nolan. And there was another Churchill movie that came out this year starring Brian Cox. So we're returning to World War II quite a bit for story material. Interesting. Now, something that we're also returning to is Jumanji. And I remember this as a kid <laughs> yeah. with Robin Williams. Yep. It was such a great movie then. And yep. they're kind of reinventing this now. Yeah, they say reimagining is the term in Hollywood now. Yeah, that was 1995. Now, uh, in this new version, it's four teenagers who discover a video game. And uh, they find themselves zapped into this video game's jungle setting as avatars. Now, the avatars <laughs> are played by Dwayne Johnson, Jack Black. Kevin Hart. There's a little uh, gender scrambling that happens in the process, which makes for the comedy. Uh, Dwayne Johnson, by the way, and Kevin Hart uh, are reunited. They were in Central Intelligence last year, and they work well together. This movie was directed by Jake Kasdan. He is the son of Lawrence Kasdan, the guy who co-wrote The Empire Strikes Back and Raiders of the Lost Ark. And uh, his dad also directed uh, Body Heat and The Big Chill, so it's a real movie family. Good lineup there. And Dwayne Johnson, man, what a, I mean, this guy has just completely reinvented or reinvented imagined himself however <laughs> really, you want to really. say it <laughs> how about Hugh Jackman in the greatest the greatest yeah, showman the greatest showman this is an original uh, movie musical based on the life of P.T. Barnum uh, celebrating the birth of show business uh, Hugh Jackman again is in the starring role co-stars uh, Zendaya Rebecca Ferguson Zac Efron it's about Zac Efron a, yeah what it's a, a good looking kid huh? yeah this is a bygone era you know piece of Americana uh, for the generations you know remember that the Ringling Brothers and Barnum at Bailey Circus you know, uh, stopped touring in May of right, this last year right. due to the concerns of uh, animal rights activists. Um, you know, for Hugh Jackman, he said this was a dream project for him. He loves doing movie musicals. Remember, he was in Les Miserables back in 2012. Uh, loves doing uh, song and dance stuff. He's very good at it when he's not playing uh, Wolverine with knife blades poking <laughs> right. out of his knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> and let's talk about father figures with everyone knows this guy, Terry Bradshaw. Yeah, well, you know, every holiday season, there seems there has to be an R-rated comedy. This is the one for this season. Uh, fraternal twin brothers played by Owen Wilson and Ed Helms uh, discover that their free-spirited mom played by Glenn Close, has not been telling them the truth about the identity of their father, so they go on a search to try to track down their dad. Among the characters they encounter, 
uh, played by uh, uh, Christopher Walk and J.K. Simmons, and of course Terry, Terry Bradshaw, Bradshaw has had quite a career on and off the field in recent years in TV commercials and doing commentary and being in movies. Um, and in this movie, he plays himself. Downsizing is also on your list, and this is kind of an interesting one. You said the trailers look funny, but there might be something deeper behind all of this. Yeah, this is from writer-director Alexander Payne. I'm a really big fan of his work. His other movies include Nebraska, The Descendants, Election. Uh, this is a comedy spin on the concept of downsizing. Um, in this case, we're talking about downsizing people, literally shrinking them down to being five inches tall. Now, when that happens, people need less, they consume less. This is great for the planet. And if you're that person, because you need less, your money goes a lot further. So a person with an average income, when you're downsized, can live like a millionaire. Uh, this co-stars Matt Damon and Kristen Wiig. Uh, the uh, trailers for this movie were just so funny. I mean, right. some of the funniest trailers I've seen in a long time. But uh, even though it has a funny premise, the story is maybe a little more thoughtful and in the end a little more serious than what you might expect, but definitely some really funny moments. It reminds me of Honey, I Shrank the Kids. Yes. But maybe with, as you're mentioning, some more thoughtful yep. Uh, yep. things behind it. And let's talk about the movie The Post. What is this about? Well, you know, the White House attacks on uh, the media and free press go all the way back to the 1970s. Mm -hmm. Back in those days, it was the New York Times and the Washington Post who dared to publish the contents of uh, some top secret classified information known as the Pentagon Papers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it was a, a dark secret that was investigated by uh, publishers and journalists who risked everything. I mean, the fate of their newspapers, they themselves faced possible jail time, you know, for what they had done. Um, you know, this movie uh, co-stars Tom Hanks and Meryl Streep uh, starring together for the first time, co-starring for the first time. That is hard to believe. I know. Two incredible actors. Yeah. Uh, you would have thought that they'd been in many, many different think, movies together. You would think. This is it. And directed by Steven Spielberg. You know, in recent years, he's really devoted a lot of his creative energy to movies about history. Uh, Breach of Spies, Lincoln, Munich. Uh, Saving Private Ryan, Schindler's List. Um, and I, I don't know, I think I put this movie on a par with movies like All the President's Men or Spotlight that came out a couple years ago right, that, that starred Michael one. Keaton from Pittsburgh. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, quite a powerful movie. And how about All the Money in the World? Yeah, this is a drama about the, the real life kidnapping of John Paul Getty III and his mother's desperate plea to get his billionaire grandfather, who had all the money in the world, John Paul Getty, uh, to pay the ransom. Um, Originally, Kevin Spacey starred in this movie as John Paul Getty, but when all this information came out in October about the uh, uh, alleged sexual mis misconduct, um, director Ridley Scott decided to recast his part in the movie and replaced him with Christopher Plummer, but he only had about two months to reshoot and re-edit and wow. still make the, uh, the holiday release date, and he managed to do that. Ridley Scott, of course, famous for movies like Alien and Blade Runner, um, and uh, again, it's about all the money in the world. And we don't have much time left, but I do want to get to Molly's game, and this is uh, on a based on a real life character. Yeah, Molly uh, Bloom, an Olympic class skier who eventually ran the world's most exclusive high stakes poker game. Uh, her players included Hollywood royalty, sports superstars, business titans, and unknowingly the Russian mob, uh, which got her into trouble with the FBI. Jessica Chastain uh, stars in this role, is directed by Aaron Sorkin. Um, he wrote movies like uh, Steve Jobs, uh, Moneyball, and The Social Network. He, uh, this is his directing uh, debut, and he even has a little uh, cameo in the movie, much like what uh, Alfred Hitchcock used to do in his films. Well, it definitely sounds like there is something for everyone. Absolutely. I'm, I'm interested to see downsizing, though. That's, that's my pick. It's cute, and the technology is great. I mean, it is so believable when they shrink these characters down. It's, uh, it's cute, and it's just, uh, again, those moments really, really work. Well, thank you for taking the time to review all of these and preview them for us. I look forward to seeing some of them, <laughs> and always good to see you here in the studio. Drew Mignot, our resident KDK movie reviewer, member of the Broadcast Film Critics Association, and also head of our KDK TV commercial production team. Thank you for being here. Merry Christmas. Same to you.